Igor or Sibit, aka Sibit. And today we're going to look at a game that will teach you some cool attacking ideas and tactics. This is a game between Matthias Valls and Saur Gatnason, played in 1985 in Malmö in Sweden. Matthias Valls is a German Grandmaster who I think is more or less retired today, but he played this beautiful game in 1985. Let's have a look. He opened with e4, and the opening was rather quiet. Bishop b5, a6, and bishop takes c6, the exchange Ruy Lopez. Now this tends to have a, a quiet reputation, but people who play this with white are usually aiming for an endgame advantage. But in this game, it turned out that we got an attacking game. Queen to d6. Protecting the pawn on e5, now that white is castled. d3. Bishop pins the knight. Bishop comes out to e3. So white's two element is quite natural. This knight comes to d2, is ready to jump into c4 to hit the queen. f6 by black to strengthen the e5 pawn. And now rook b1. And this signals that white wants to attack on the queen side. Push the b pawn push the a pawn and try to open things up here. Black answered with knight e7. Trying to get his pieces out. And white was consistent here and played pawn to b4. We saw knight g6 from black. This knight might have some prospects, but it seems like black's attack on the king side is quite slow so far. h3 from white. And now black must make a decision on this bishop. If you take on f3, you leave a lot of uh, weak white squares behind. And you'd also like to keep the bishop pair, so got also decided to back up to e6. And then we saw a4 from white. And now we see that Walsh is ready to increase his attack on the king side. Queen d7. This is both covering b5 and at least letting light white think about any uh, sacrifices on h3, but uh, such a sacrifice is unlikely to succeed with so little material that black can bring to the king side. So it's more like a defensive move. White played d4. Black decided to bring out his last piece, bishop to d6, and now b5 by uh, Matthias. This was captured by black. And now e takes d4. This turns out to be a mistake. And white has a very strong move here. How would you continue the attack? It's a little bit of a session zook, as we say. The natural move is to take on d4. But whilst he went with Rook to a1. This of course threatens mate on a8. So king b8 is a natural continuation. And now knight takes d4. Now things look tough for black. White is threatening b takes c6. How do you deal with that? Piano so decided to take on b5. But he missed a beautiful combination. What can you find for white here? This is a beautiful combination that mixes together uh, a lot of different themes. So, have you put things together? What did white play here? He played the wonderful Rook to A8 check. What on earth is that? King takes a8, and it's our move. What did we accomplish with this move? Well, we lured the king to a8, and what is different now? What's the continuation? Queen e1 check. Okay, so we sacrificed the rook, and now our queen is where our rook was. So what did we gain from this?
You are absolutely right. We can play Queen A7. <laughs> this is just unreal stuff. Unreal. The king comes to c8, queen a8 mate. Actually, black resigned here. If he takes the queen, there is the double check. And it's very important where you give the check. You give it on c6 to cover the b8 square. Very important. So it doesn't matter if the king goes to a8 or a6. In both cases, we play rook a1, and all black can do is interpose the bishops. And we will give checkmate. So a beautiful mating combination, utilizing several themes. Deflection, luring the king, double attack, queen sacrifice, just you know everything you want in a combination. One of the best combinations I think I've seen. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.